It's never been easier to purchase IELTS books with the show. Just go to tiki.vn and with just one mouse click, you'll be able to find the perfect IELTS books you've been waiting for. Purchase anywhere and receive discounts. Go to tiki.vn and buy. Wow, <laughs> the show is starting and it's another episode of IELTS Face Off, but I'm wondering what the, this week's clues will be. Hi, are you a clue? And you're really big right now. Okay, Cute. okay, it's about maximizing efficiency. Is it about doing research? Maybe it's an insect researcher. Oh, Hanoi nửa đầu thế kỷ. Okay, this is Hanoi. Lịch vạn niên Việt Nam, Vietnamese history. Oh, this is a lot of stuff. It's really heavy. And this is world history. Oh, I know. I think our guest today is a historical researcher. I'm quite sure that is going to be our guest. So let's see who the person is. But meanwhile, it's really heavy. So guys, let's look at who our guest is. <laughs> Hi, my name is Dao Hang Zui, and I'm an eighth grader. History is one of my main hobbies because it is both fascinating and entertaining. I am currently working on a project called the 10 most influential battles in the world. See, I was so right. But before we meet our guests, I think I, I Tracy, can you help me take care of this? Thank you. One, two, and three. Wow. Good luck. <laughs> Let's see. Let's come and meet our guests. Okay, we're in the studio again. Our guest, lovely guest is here. Hello, uh, how are you? Uh, I'm Mr. Fine. Historical oh. Researcher. Yes. Are you ready to chat with me in our IELTS face off hot seat? Yes. Yes. All right, IELTS hot seat where Zui is not scared of me. Coming right up next. We're back in the studio, and I'm so excited to actually start the conversation with our young historical researcher. So tell me a bit about how your passion for history started. So it was when I was very small. I heard folk tales. And when I learned that they were based on real historical events, I started researching about history, and I got really fascinated about all the events that happened. So when you said that you're fascinated by all of the events that happened, mm -hmm. you have these 10 series of events that you thought changed the world. Yes. How did you pick out these 10 series of events? There's a lot of battles throughout history, but to pick them out, we could pick out the major wars first, and then choose which battles were the turning points of the war itself and how it affected the world. What about you? How did it affect you? You know, based on all the years that, that you've been, you know, looking at historical events. It just gives me a lot of knowledge about history and it also gives me a, a way to entertain myself. So one of the things that, you know, a lot of the kids, they use a certain type of character, an adjective to describe themselves. Mm -hmm. What is your adjective? I would call myself an introvert. You're an introvert. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and are you comfortable with, with this term, you know? And what is an introvert to you? An introvert is a person who doesn't socialize a lot and likes to stay in quiet places where they could enjoy themselves. I used to be a researcher. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I didn't do historical research, but I did biological research. And one of the qualities of a researcher is like, you know, we got to go in there, we got to spend hours and hours looking up things and not have to be, you know, swayed by all of our friends going out and asking us to go out. Mm -hmm. So how do you actually conduct your research and how do you keep the discipline? History just fascinates me, so I just prioritize history. That disciplines me and also gives me more time to pay attention on history. Mm. How do you do the research? I research history from a lot of sources, mainly b books and the internet. And the internet has a lot of topics, but the information needs to be verified because anyone could post a web page and claim it's historical for facts. So there still needs some verification. Mm -hmm. um, books, on, on the other hand, are usually more accurate, but they're inaccessible and they only cover a smaller range of topics. So with the myriad of information available, 
on the internet and also on history because history there's multiple multiple types of data and information mm -hmm. how do you make sure that your information is accurate or is you know neutral I to do so I would take it from a lot of sources like source A source B and see if they match if they don't match I'm gonna take another source and see which ones they match with the other source so what if I were to ask you, just pick that one event in Vietnam that you feel has a really big significance on you, um, then what, what is that going to be? I think that would be the Tet Offensive. 1968? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Because that battle or that chain of battles would influence the public opinion, not only in the U.S., but the whole world. And soon people would, against the war in Vietnam, mm -hmm. yeah. So as a young Vietnamese person in Vietnam who's super knowledgeable about history, uh, where do you see yourself in Vietnamese history? I see myself in the time of when Vietnam is experiencing globalization and it, it is influenced by many cultures outside it like Korea, K-pop, <laughs> <laughs> Japan anime, and maybe U.S. U.S. cinemas. How do you think young people like yourself, you know, and, and myself, what can we do to be better players in Vietnamese communities and help to grow Vietnam in the global stage? Maybe we, we could spread the teaching of English to more students as English has become an important role to communicate with other people outside of Vietnam. Yeah. And oh. maybe history because it gives an a sense of national identity. Yeah. So this is an educational show and a lot of students around your age are watching. Yeah. So what advice do you have for them with regards to learning English or learning about history? How can they like both better? Well, if you want to learn about English, it's better if you just read books because books improve your reading speed, it improves your comprehension skills, and also listening to English lectures could improve your pronunciation. Finally, if you want to learn history, it's just about reading more about historical topics, possibly watching documentaries because they're usually more entertaining than reading books. One of the things we always ask from all of our guests is for them to share a book that they really love or a book that they're currently reading. So what is your current to-go um, book right now? One of my favorite books right now is The Art of War. By Sun Tzu. Yeah, Sun Tzu. Yeah. Written back during the 500 BC. It has a lot of military strategies which could also be applied in the real world. Last but not least, why don't you share with our audience one of your favorite vocabularies or uh, one of your favorite idioms so that our audience can also learn English better. One of my favorite idioms is not a step back. This was an order issued by Joseph Stalin mm -hmm. during the Battle of Stalingrad. And this disciplined the Soviet army and told them to fight against the harsh conditions, to persevere. It really helped them and they were able to win the battle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. Well, you know, talking mm -hmm. about perseverance and winning the battle, are mm -hmm. you ready to win one of the challenges that's coming right up next? For yes, you? I'm ready. Okay, let's do this. So guys, IELTS Face Off Challenge is coming right up next. If you're looking to see how we will fight it out, stay tuned. This is the IELTS Face Off Challenge and we are here with our contender, Zui. We're gonna have a series of questions relating to history and Zui is really going to answer them. We have two and a half minutes and you're gonna yeah. try to answer as many questions as you can correctly. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right, so questions begin now. In which country is the Citadel of Machu Picchu located? Colombia, Bolivia, Peru. Peru. Correct. What does the R stand for in USSR? Republics, Russian, Revolutionary. Republics. <laughs> Correct. What was the name of the ship in which James Cook commanded upon his discovery of Australia, HMS Endeavour, HMS Discovery, HMS Australis? HMS D Endeavour. Per correct. Who preceded, uh, preceded Ronald Reagan as President of America? Jimmy Carter, Gerald Ford, George W. Bush. Jimmy Carter. Correct. What was the name of the captain of the Titanic at the time of its sinking? Edward Smith, William Murdoch, Henry Wilde. Edward Smith. Yes. Of the following Greek buildings, which is dedicated to the goddess of Athena, Parthenon, Acropolis, Temple of Athea. Parthenon. Correct. Which inventor is associated with the invention of the thermometer in 1593? Newton, Galileo, or Pascal? Galileo. 
Correct. Which leader ruled the USSR from 1917 to 1922? Vladimir Lenin, Joseph Vlad Stalin. Vladimir Lenin. <laughs> You're right. What was Turkey known as during the World War I? The Ottoman Empire. I didn't even read it, but you got it. During which century was the French Revolution? 17th, 18th, or 19th? 18th. Absolutely. Which of Henry VIII's wives gave birth to Elizabeth I? Catherine of Aragon, Anne Boleyn, and Jane Seymour. Catherine of Aragon. Uh, incorrect, that's Anne Boleyn. What was the first capital of ancient Egypt? Phoebus, Memphis, and Alexandria. Memphis. Correct. Which Soviet leader decided to place nuclear weapons in Cuba prior to the missile crisis? Nikita Khrushchev. Yes, I didn't even read. And you're right. Which Russian astronaut was the first man to conduct a spacewalk? Oleg Novitsky, Yuri Gagarin, Alexei Leonov. The first guy. The third guy. Third guy. <laughs> Alexei Leonov. In what year did Elizabeth II become Queen of England? 1952. You're so right. I didn't even read the question. In what year was Mahatma Gandhi assassinated? 45, 48, 51. 48. You're absolutely correct. And you are done in less than two minutes and a half and got almost all correct. Yes, <laughs> fantastic. Well, you know, I'm really looking forward okay. to more and more and more of your historical research and a lot more of those historical exhibitions. Thanks so much for coming. Thanks. All right, this is the end of our conversation with our lovely 13-year-old historian, Zui. But make sure you continue to watch us because the IELTS expert section is coming right up next. You'll get some really great IELTS tips and English tips. Stay tuned. Next. IELTS on the go will follow Tao Tâm to Long An to meet and greet the young lovely students from Long An High School for the gift. They are talented and passionate about life, of course, but they will also share with you many wonderful life stories and English approaching with you. And as usual, when all the guys are great, it is really hard to choose the one who represents voice of this week. Who will be that person? Excited enough, absolutely. But wait, let's get to the studio right now with Phoebe and our IELTS expert, Richard Cherry. With studying for the IELTS, a good prep book is a must. IELTS book are rare to find, mostly out of stock, overpriced. Well, but do you know there is a wealth of IELTS prep materials on Tiki.vn? Ordering is a breeze, shipping is lightning fast, and they have tons of promotions to get you that sweet, sweet savings. Getting IELTS prep materials has never been easier, so log on to Tiki.vn today. Welcome back to IELTS Face Off. This is the IELTS Expert section, and Richard is here with us today. Welcome back. Hi, Phoebe. It's great to be back. Thanks. Well, let's go on to another small region here in Vietnam and follow our friend, our lovely friend Tao Tâm, to IELTS On The Go. Okay. All right, Tao Tâm, take it away, IELTS On The Go. Hello Phoebe, hello studio, and we're back on IELTS on the go. Here we are today in Long Ang, and we're also at Long Ang High School for the Gifted with lovely ladies and we're going to talk a bit about our future paths and also how to incorporate our hobbies into it. So I'm going to let them introduce themselves, starting off with you. Um, hello everyone, my name is Nguyen Bo Trần Khoi Nguyen. I'm a 12th grader. Hello everybody, my full name is Do Huynh Thanh Vy. I'm 17 years old. Mm -hmm. I am a school. Great towers. Last but not least. Hello everyone. My name is Ho Uy Nhi and I'm 17 years old. Okay, so let's start. I heard you guys are excellent students in school. So could you list for me a few activities you've participated and um, came out victorious? Last year, I mm -hmm. went in for a speaking contest that was organized by my school. Mm -hmm. And as I pulled my socks up and Luckily, I got the first prize. Nice, very nice. So, how about you guys? Uh, I've been in some competitions, yes. but not really much, because I think myself, I don't have competitiveness. So, how about personal hobbies? Because I'm sure each of us, we all have the things we enjoy doing in our own spare time. 
What do you consider your personal hobby? Yeah, in my free time, I usually uh, surf the internet and listen English songs. Uh, and I also love traveling. Yeah, all right. You both enjoy English-related activities mm -hmm. and traveling, right? Yeah. So do you feel like you could incorporate that into your future career? I would like to be a tour guide. My, my parents don't force me to be a tour guide mm -hmm. because they said that that job is really dangerous for a girl. How about you, Nhi? What's your hobby? I like singing, but maybe I'm not a good singer, so I just dance and sing when I'm alone or just with my friends. Right. Dancing and singing is probably not going to be your career, right? Yeah. <laughs> what did you um, decide to do when you're older and finish probably um, university and high school? I haven't decided yet, but maybe I want to learn about international trade laws in university. Wow, that's very specific. So right, last but not least, Nguyen, take it away. Yes, so my hobby is cooking mm -hmm. because I really love eating Korean food Korean and I food. think that everybody does. And uh, I usually surf on the internet to mm -hmm. look for the easiest recipe so mm -hmm. that and then I will find the ingredients and then I will cook it by myself and then I will let my uh, family braid it. Nice. And then what do you what else do you plan to do with your um, Korean food journey? Um, maybe I think that as an uh, English major, mm -hmm. I think that maybe I will make like a YouTube channel and then right. I will make a cooking video and then I will speak English so that I at the same time I can practice my English sk skills and at the same time show my cooking cues. That's very cool because you're incorporating your hobby yeah. and your, your major yes. into one yeah. and then producing something that is useful for like both hands, right? And also, a very um, special part of IELTS on the go. Do you know what it is? Speaking test. The speaking test, yes. So we're going to decide out of the three of you who is going to take place in the speaking test. So I'm going to let you guys discuss amongst yourself and I'm going to come back and then you guys can tell me who's going to take the test, right? So I'm going to let them discuss and then we're going to come back and find out who's going to take the test. All right. So I was just talking to three of these lovely ladies and even though they're so young, they have a lot of aspirations but at the same time, it's also understandable that they're unsure of what they're going to do in the future. But one of my personal beliefs is that everything is going to fall into the perfect orbit with enough time. So I really hope I can follow through with these girls and see where they wind up in the future and see if they actually pursue cooking or traveling or um, international trade. So I'm gonna find out first who's gonna take the IELTS test. No, come on. Right, so who's it gonna be? I think we will take responsibilities for this. Right, so it's you now, Ling. it's on you now. Yes. Maybe I will have tried it. Mm hmm Okay, so I'm gonna take Wing away from you guys so she can take the test. Let's go, baby. Best of luck to you. Bye. So are you ready to face off, Richard? Yes, I'm ready to face off. Let's go. Here comes our voice of this week. Finally, Khoi Nguyen has been nominated to be voice of this week to enter the speaking test room. To face off our IELTS expert and to challenge herself in the real-time speaking test. Let's cross the fingers for her and her performance. We wonder will Richard Cherry be gentle on her? And next, you can't miss the useful tips for this week about how to improve your most scary skill in the IELTS test, the most of the Vietnamese student, which is speaking. And in Book of the Week, we will bring you a book named Tips for IELTS. Ready for the last part of the show? All is set and we'll come to you right now. Welcome to the speaking test. My name is Richard. What is your full name, please? Uh, my name is Nguyen, Bo Trần Khoi Nguyen. Here's part one. 
How well do you know the people who live next door to you? I think that I know my neighbor quite well. They are very nice people, and especially the kids. I am very close to them because I have lived in the neighborhood for several years now, and we used to hang out a lot, and we still do now. Thank you. Here's part two. I'd like you to describe an interesting subject that you studied at school. Among many different subjects uh, being taught at school, English is my favorite one and also the one that I can learn best at school. Uh, back when I was in grade one, I really loved watching Disney Channel. It's like everybody's childhood. That's when I got to know about English and had an affection for English. I have studied English for several years now since primary school and I have the chance to learn the fundamental of English and as well as uh, being flexible uh, in practicing my English. And during my school years, I have the chance to study with many different teachers. And this is uh, the most interesting about English because studying with many different teachers give me the opportunity to be more flexible because each teacher have their own way of tailoring their teaching methods, so I learned a lot from them. And well, I'm interested in this subject for some reasons. Firstly, as I have just mentioned before, I really love uh, watching Disney Channel. I was fascinated about the way the, the character act, the way the character behave, and so I decided to know more about this language in order to understand my favorite character. So I decided to pull my socks up to study English. And Another reason is besides study English at school, I really love reading uh, English story books such as comics or novels. And uh, last but not least, uh, I have a tendency to outperform in English uh, compared to other subjects. So maybe that's why English is my favorite one. Thank you. Here's part three. What makes a good student? Um, in my opinion, the best student has the, uh, the mix of the ability to do hard work and intelligence because you know if you only have one of the two it will be very difficult for you to be successful there are some subjects that no matter how hard you work you just cannot do it as as well as those who are uh, naturally intelligent if you don't have a base of intelligence and on the other hand there are some subjects that uh, even if you are one of the smartest bunch of the class, but you don't apply yourself to the subjects or you just uh, don't hardly put any efforts in, you are not going to get anywhere. Thank you. That is the end of the speaking test. Thank you. Cái nội quy trường gắt không? Nội quy gắt dữ lắm. Oh, hi, she's back. Hi, Nguyen. So, how was the test? So it was a bunch of nerves because right. I haven't taken any eye test before, mm -hmm. but it turns out quite well in, at, at last. So congratulations on taking the test, but now let's head up to the studio and listen to what the IELTS expert has to say. Take it away. Yeah, so Richard, what do you think of Ang Nguyen's performance? Um, I thought it was really good. Um, I made a few notes here about her performance. I hope you don't mind if I refer to them. I think one area where she's really strong is in her use of vocabulary. So she was using a lot of kind of idiomatic items that really impressed me. She, she spoke about applying yourself to the subject. Uh, if you don't put effort in, you're not going anywhere, she said. Um, and all of these were really great use of, of language. She was let down at times by some fossilized errors. So it's very normal for us to hear people dropping third person S, for example. She said uh, each teacher have their own way. Uh, the teacher should be the one that teach. Um, and of course, again, very characteristic, some little errors with plurals, uh, some missing plurals. Now, all of those in the big scheme of things are not big errors and big problems but at some level there is a point beyond which you know your, your band score says you can't have any mistakes at this point so it's good to attend to those kind of errors at an early stage of your 
English learning career or else they can become fossilized. That's fantastic. Thanks, Richard. So thank you very much for being with us here today and thank you for sharing about your dreams and I hope you guys can like do the, your very best to achieve them. And as a bit of appreciation, here is a little gift from IELTS Face Off and British Council and Tiki.vn. Now, on to our next section after IELTS on the go, there is going to be, we're gonna hit you with that tips, 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 and tips. So stay tuned. So Richard, this week's tips are on speaking. Mm -hmm. What do you have to say about speaking and pronunciation? Speaking and pronunciation. A lot of teachers will give the advice that in order to pronounce English more accurately, one should listen to more English. And that is ac that's good advice, but really you need very specific tasks to do while listening. So I, I can suggest some. I mean, uh, there are a lot of websites out there, including uh, BBC Learning English and British Council Learn English, where there are sound files which include an audio script. Uh, the audio script can be downloaded and printed, and that becomes a useful document. So if I'm going to focus on pronunciation, uh, then I will begin to mark that document before I listen to the sound file. I will identify where I'm likely to hear stressed syllables within the text. I'll identify where I'm likely to hear uh, weak syllables within the text. Uh, also connection of sounds, possibly intonation, and I will analyze the script before I listen. Then I'll listen to the audio script and check that my ideas were correct. If you're all alone at home uh, talking to the mirror, I guess no one's going to laugh at you. So. Uh, yeah, there are actually a lot of things that you can do to work on a pronunciation at home. I think those are amazing tips because I've, I've also listened to a lot of some of the best public speakers in the world. For example, you know, um, Barack Obama, for example. Mm. And even though they are native English speakers, you know, they do rehearse a lot uh, in their own private time. Uh, and another angle to it is that of chunking text. Mm. So if I stand in front of you and deliver a, a, a speech and the words are da 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 like this, then you know, it's important for me to know when to pause sometimes to, to add meaning to the, the chunks of text that you're listening to. Fantastic tips. Thank you, Richard. Hey, guys. Are you wondering which book you can use? Remember, every week we will give you a book of the week. So here's this week's book suggestion. This book is short but sweet, only 60 pages. It offers concise tips and strategies for each skill. The advice is very good, but there are no practice activities. So it is important to read these tips in small chunks. Then find a practice test book to put the strategies into practice. Now, if you're looking to order those books, there's a fantastic place that you can go to. And with just one click of a mouse, you can have the books delivered to your home. So happy reading and make sure you check TE.vn out. And so Richard, thank you very, very much. Thank you. For always being an amazing guest and an amazing expert to our show. Thank you so much. It's amazing to be here with this amazing show too. <laughs> thank you. Well, guys, make sure you continue because we still have some more things going on. So stay tuned. Hey, did you enjoy today's episode on history? Well, as you can already tell, there's no age that actually determines how old or how young you are to really learn about history. And with all the information that's available today, I do think that history is not just a subject that you study in school. It really is information and knowledge about life. Because history determines culture, and history also determines behavior. And if we're looking to understand the society and the community that we are living in, 
I think understanding its history is also fantastic. And of course, we can also understand our family history as well. A lot of us have amazing stories to, to tell from our grandparents. And so we hope that this episode has inspired you to continue to explore your own history as well as your community's history. Until next time, we'll see you again. Good night.